Okay, follow up to our Siena call, uh, C-I-E-N from last night. Uh, if you saw our video, we liked it at 14.09 and a secondary catalyst at 14.21. Um, all right, it gapped down a little and actually went down to 13.84 at one point um, before popping up here. I don't like to tr take a trade in the first five, really the first 15 minutes. Um, so I left this one alone and waited to see what was going to happen. I wish I had a. I wish this video was leading up to um, some great trade I made in CIEN, but it was actually one of the um, well, the worst trade of the day for me and for our chat room. Uh, and here's what happened: um, it now put in a lower high with another five-minute candle. So now you've got 15 minutes expired. Things are a little less whippy. You can see how wide this candle is. That's and that's um, typical in the first 10, 15 minutes of trading. I really don't like to trade in the first 30 minutes, but because Sienna. Um, was so near that breakout on the daily, uh, maybe got overly excited. I went ahead and said, if it breaks this candle's high, 1406, uh, should get through the high of the day and maybe fulfill our breakout. Um, I believe I said the worst case stop. I don't want to get this wrong. Um, 1388, okay, um, below this candle. So in other words, if it broke this candle's high, 1406, worst case stop, 1388, what is that, 12, 6, 18 cents? risk. Um, as I tell people, if you take a trade in the first 15 minutes, 30 minutes really, trade about one third the size that you normally would. I think I said that in the video last night about Sienna too, but here's what happened. Okay, Triggers, and this is a five minute candle so you can see how quickly um, things whip around. Okay, Triggered 14.06, uh, a couple minutes later it's at 14.17. I got a little complacent thinking, okay, I've got my breakout. Normally, and I teach our members, Sell, if you get a dime or more, sell a little bit, right? That way you pay for your commissions and then you can kill it if it comes back flat or at least let your stop work, but you've sold some here and you get stopped out down here. Um, it lessens the damage, especially on an early trade. This one I got complacent on. I was just, uh, part of me felt like, hey, we caught a nice breakout here. And uh, so I just went ahead and left my stop in place and did nothing else with it. And uh, in another five minutes, I'm stopped out. So not a great way to start the day. I asked everybody at the end of the day, hey, Sienna was really the only trade that didn't work today. Anybody want to voice or, or type in what you think uh, we did wrong or w what our mistake was or, or what was wrong with Sienna? And uh, invariably, a whole bunch of people typed in, we took it too early. Um, in other words, it was an early trade. We usually sit on our hands for the first half hour and let things really calm down. So Sienna um, just did not work. Like I said, I wish I had a video where I could say, um, oh, we shorted it up here because I knew it wasn't going to go. Um, nothing like that. Um, actually could have shorted the first break of a previous five minute candles low. Once you have a failed breakout, it's usually a great short and it would have been as you can see. Um, did have a nice call in ATPG. I'm going to show you the daily on this first because man, this thing uh, was just getting killed, but down to support. And so we had this on bounce watch today. You can see the nice bounce. I'll show you how we called it on an intraday basis. Um, I made the call in ATPG at 16.13, this is a very nice percentage gainer here, um, 16.13, so probably right about there, worst case stop, 16, what am I saying, 6.13, worst case stop, uh, 5.99, so what is that, 14 cents risk, there's the stop, um, went sideways for a while and then finally took off and made it all the way to, um, 676. I haven't done the percentage figures on that, but a very nice percentage gain. Um, unfortunately, uh, again, I had one of those blunder days. Um, I took profits on some, like I teach, on that first pop, and then I went to a break even stop. Um, that way I don't have to look at it, I don't have to worry about it, and you can see our entry. Um, you can see it came back down to the entry right in here. Um, and at one point it was down below that, and I was feeling like a, de a genius, but the original stop would have held. And I've always said to our members, if your position size is correct, uh, certainly pay yourself on the first pop, but uh, let the rest of your stop, uh, let your stop work on the rest. And I'm not very good at that because I like to get to a can't lose trade um, as quickly as I can, okay? Um, just to show you though, ATPG, the call 613, stop 599, and just to prove that uh, not everyone is a, um, is a big chicken trader like me, uh, Heath from our chat. I'm copying these straight from chat. Uh, chat today. Heath made 1,700 in ATPG. Deborah 700, and D Dale just popped in from work to let me know that he made uh, over a thousand. 
he actually saw it on the Twitter feed. He wasn't in the chat room today, but he is one of our members. Um, so not everybody uh, just made sandwich money on it like I did. And I'll try to go over um, the rest of the ideas from today too. Just so I can show you all the calls. Uh, BRLI, um, again, from yesterday. We, we still had our eyes on this one, and I like this little flag pattern. Went ahead and called BRLI at 1315 right up in here. Worst case stop, 1299, so not a bad risk, and we got a nice little pop there. Up to about 1350, and then just sideways for hours, uh, but a nice trade for us there. Um, HOLX, now this one called it when it looked like this. I said if it breaks this high, it could get through yesterday's high, and I like the daily. Uh, there's the daily. Uh, very strong gap, and it looked like it could go, all right? Um, and you can see what happened there. HOLX called it at uh, 1770, and it triggered right there, and uh, it basically took a flat in it about five minutes later. I looked at the volume and said, you know what, this thing's only traded a little over 100,000 today, um, so got back out as a flat on that one. Um, and I think, oh, then late in the day, um, I called JEF. The reason, I'll give you the reason real quick. JEF had massive volume on uh, possible ties to that MF Global, um, what, about two weeks ago? And then up until today, hadn't broken its own early high after the, uh, after the initial chaos here, hadn't broken its own early high. By early high, I mean hadn't had an afternoon break. Um, so when it looked like, when it looked like this, right about there, these are five minute candles. I called it um, oh, where trigger? 11.04. I said if it gets up to 11.04, worst case stop 10.94, so about a dime risk. Uh, and right there, trigger got through the high of the day, which is what I was hoping. And then they piled in a little bit, and we were selling to the people piling in on the high of day break. Um, and it closed okay, but uh, just a small trade there. So um, as I said in chat today, sometimes this market is fake, making me feel um, a little bit like a moron at times because... You know, the spy's just chopping around. It's a very low volume week, by the way. And then all of a sudden we break to new lows. Okay, so uh, at this point I'm sitting in cash looking for ideas, looking for our potential final push down setups. Um, and then next thing you know, I don't know if it's news out of Europe, the thing just uh, over the course of 30 minutes goes right through the highs of the day. Um, and again, not really on much volume. So what happens here is uh, I'm always cautious. I'm sitting here trying to find ideas for the room. Next thing you know, next thing you know, over 10 minutes, you get, wow, what was that pop about? A little bit of a grind, and next thing you know, we're through the highs of the day, and stocks and the market itself are just grinding higher, and I'm without an entry because I'm not going to chase. So um, that doesn't happen that often, although lately, it's happening more than I would like to admit. So it's kind of a frustrating market, but we're trying to be patient and uh, eke out some nice trades here and there. Everything we do, uh, in my opinion, makes sense based on the chart and has a very tight stop. So... Um, certainly not over trading by any stretch and sometimes the market just makes it really tough to find an entry and uh, these rallies too another uncommon thing are happening during the lunchtime period which is really unusual so there's a uh, there's no predicting that we'll just keep logging in every morning waiting for the low risk setups and uh, hopefully can make some members uh, more of those thousand plus days like we got for some of them today all right I'm not gonna babble any further uh, we'll talk to you later